Hello, everyone. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We are here in Palo Alto at our studio uh, here with a special guest, Larry Augustin, who's the CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Sugar CRM, uh, luminary in the business. Uh, he's a technical geek, formerly the owner of Slashdot and a lot of early web properties that we all know, us old guys know. Um, welcome to the Cube Studios here in Palo Alto. Great, Great to see you. Thank you, John. Thrilled to be here. I did not know you were just talking uh, before you we got on, on camera here about your history in media, besides being one of the, one of the best CRM companies out there, Sugar CRM. Great, great history. Yeah, you know, I uh, uh, I was the founder and CEO of a company, VA Linux, which I took public yep. in 99, sort of the peak of the bubble. Um, still have the record for the largest first day gain ever in an IPO. Um, somewhat dubious record, <laughs> but but a uh, great record none, nonetheless. And uh, uh, we had acquired a set of properties, uh, Slashdot, Linux.com, yeah. uh, uh, IT Manager's Journal that yeah. uh, we put together. And our goal was to build a, a whole media segment around yeah. uh, open source and Linux. And uh, it was fun to be in that business. Throughout my career, I sort of steadily moved my way up the software stack, if yeah. you will, uh, starting out in systems there and now in applications with customer relationship management. And you have multiple computer science degrees, so we know we can talk shop and get <laughs> down and dirty. Um, but what's interesting, though, is that looking back, and I didn't know that history kind of connects the dots for me, is that you, those was that was early day community. I mean, back then, that was... Right at the be right at the the thrust of the beachhead being developed for open source, yes. you saw a great Earl. I call it Gen One. I'm calling it Gen One because that's what I'm saying. But it was probably before that. But that was really when the notion of using free software became yes. really happening. Yes, yes. And, and that was the early formation of communities. We were probably one of the first companies to have a what you call a community marketing function which has become far yeah. more common than, in fact, if I look at my original community <laughs> marketing team, most of them are now running some function of marketing related to community at a lot of existing companies today, right? And sort of building that concept out and uh, uh, kind of at the early days of open source, and now you look at any company today in the space and they all build on open source. Yeah. I mean, Sugar, a big part of what we do is built on open source. An important part of what we do is, is community, uh, reaching out to all those developers that build around us. Uh, and the company really got its start as a uh, CRM that we reached out yeah. to the community and built on open source principles. And let's go back to the, the uh, let's connect the dots there. I want to get into that, the sugar dynamic because at that time, the community wanted an alternative. Yes. Talk about yes. what happened there because you're seeing the notion of community as we were just talked about from the early days to being state of the art part of now our marketing functions, our customer service functions, data acquisition functions for product development. Yes. Essentially data and well, networks yeah. are driving everything. I think one of the key elements here is if you look at the way people buy, it's changed. We've all bought things. You buy <laughs> things, I be, buy things, everyone out there listening, we're all consumers. We all buy things. But the way we buy has changed over the past two decades. If you go back 10 years, 20 years, the information we got as consumers was all what was given to us by companies. Or it was what companies controlled through reviews or product placement, and our sources of information were limited. And part of that was because of the ability to communicate. The ability of a buyer, a consumer, to find another person like themselves and understand that buying dynamic was limited. So along comes the internet, and one of the great things about the internet is where you can always find another person like yourself, <laughs> and right? It's easy to complain too about things too. Yes, it's, the internet. it's easy to complain, but, but you know, one of the great things is, is yeah. you can always find other people like yourselves. You can come together and, yeah. and whatever your interest is, uh, now on the internet, the odds are there's somebody in the world who's making their mission to tell everyone else in the world about that space and they're not beholden to a company, they're not beholden to any kind of special interest there, and they do it just because they value it and it's their passion. Yeah. And what this means is the way people buy has changed. Yeah. So it's become the, the now the number one influencer of a buying decision is other people like yourself, in particular through the internet. So customer experience has become more important. Um, honesty and integrity and uh, transparency, and transparency yeah. in that companies can no longer project a brand image and do that through marketing that is inconsistent with the real behavior with customers because it becomes apparent. And the internet has facilitated yeah. that. So it's more important th than ever that companies yeah. are looking at uh, creating that authentic image. And that is driving a lot of the interest in the market and space today around uh, solutions like ours that help companies create and manage that experience 
with customers. I want to get into the uh, the sugar um, uh, product in a second, but I want to get your thoughts because this is a great thread. And thanks for for sharing. It's great to have you here. This all this expertise and historical view. Um, so you look at the old the old expression, "What is old is new again." Yes. You know, we talk about communities. You know, we were just talking on my morning show this morning on the Silicon Valley Friday show about uh, AI, and you know, uh, my guest Jim Long, um, uh, our friend, ex Cal guy. Uh, systems guy. We're talking about um, neural networks are now hot, but neural networks have been around for a while. So you're seeing things like neural networks. Um, we're talking about communities now morphing at, at, a, at a whole other level have been around, but now the notion of scale, you talk about the internet, yeah. you bring in a notion of scale. I mean, yes. we can always say what was on IRC 15, 20 years ago, IRC chat is basically Slack now at scale. Yes. So you now have older concepts at a scale point. Yes. What's your thoughts on that? Certainly neural networks points it, to well, AI. It's, it's, it's fascinating. Those of us have been in the tech industry long enough, you know, and, and uh, you know, I'm 54. I've been through this for, you know, enough decades now. We will look back and we say, yeah, you know, 20 years ago I heard that. Uh, one we were talking about just the other day was predictive analytics. I remember, you know, 15 years ago, a whole, you know, phase around predictive analytics, and now there's a whole good discussion happening today as if, oh, it's the new thing. <laughs> right, you know, well, th those things have been around, and you look at the many, many of the ways we build technologies. Um, uh, technology goes through waves; these things go through mm -hmm. cycles. What was old comes back around. Um, you know, what was uh, new things created, and uh, uh, I think it's important to be in the right place and right time around those waves. You know, you take cloud computing today, yeah. mm -hmm. or you take the way we build technologies. Um, if you go back to the days of client server. And if you, you, yeah. you're an old Unix person, yeah, you remember exactly. those days yeah. when when the exciting thing was we're moving to client server. So I had a desktop client yeah. and a server out in the cloud, right? And uh, of course, the internet has let us take that server and move it out to a vendor cloud or onto Amazon yeah. or IBM or any one of multiple clouds so the company doesn't have to manage it. A great help for yep. a business in terms of spinning something up. But what's interesting, in the early days of the web, when we built web applications, it was this HTML web page sort of experience and application. Yeah. All of those today have moved to what is effectively a client that happens to be written in JavaScript instead of C or whatever the client language <laughs> was, right? Happens to run in a web browser, which is, you know, Internet Explorer or Chrome yeah. or, or Netscape is your operating system. Mm -hmm. Right, and they actually talk to that server side in the same way those old clients. Yeah, mobile. Apps Let's get did. mobile out there too. A whole other ball game. Yeah. So getting a little, you know, maybe a little bit technical, you know, from our backgrounds here, but uh, the world of client server is effectively what is happening with modern web applications. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting to see those waves and, and how they change. And sometimes, having had that experience, you can look back and say, "Okay, I get what's happening with mm -hmm. this." It's new technologies, it's rebranded a bit, but there's a lot of the similar concepts that yeah. come and go. Talk about the um, uh, Sugar CRM business for a minute, because that's an interesting position now. You you guys have come out from an open source kind of philosophy as an alternative, and also that just goes grew out of the big giant assays, Oracle uh, and others. But now there's a lot of shifts happening in what CRM means. Yes. So because you have a change in the landscape, yes. you know, certainly cloud is going to impact that on-prem, data centers moving to the cloud, and you got mobile, multiple channels. Um, how is the, the the business changing? I mean, give us the update. Spend a minute. Yeah, the update yeah. On well, I think the real opportunity sugar. around CRM is is historically CRM, and, and again, those of us who've been around may remember when uh, CRM was hot, and then it went cold, <laughs> and it's hot again, right? And again, going in waves. Um, it was hot originally as. Uh, look, there needs to be information around the customer. We need a, something we put at the center around the customer. And it originally emerged as what I'll call a, a system of record. Um, at, at its simplest level, a customer database, and it's more complicated, a whole set of information that brought a view of the customer together. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was very useful, and many companies, the, the prime use of that was something we call Salesforce automation, which is help a company manage the sales team. What is my salesperson doing? How many meetings did they go to? Who did they talk to today? You know, how many calls? Activity-based management of the sales mm -hmm. team. Useful for a CEO. I certainly value the information. What's that comes the pipeline out of that. look like? What's hey. the pipeline look like? Yeah. Forecasting, yeah. exactly, right? But if you think about it, um, that doesn't help the user, the end user, that individual do their job. 
salesperson, yeah. you know, how does forecasting help them go into a conversation and have a meeting with a customer? It doesn't. And what happened was uh, those systems turned into systems where the salesperson would show up once every two weeks, uh, their information in. put their information in, <laughs> and it was reporting up to the boss, right? Yeah. And and a role for that, but all faced with challenges of adoption, yeah. usefulness for the sales it's team. It's like getting, pulling teeth. Yes, yeah, like, and everyone knows this, this story, the right? Boss, this is my boss's report, so I'm sandbagging. Yeah, I had a call this month. I had a call bad. this month, you know, <laughs> yeah. and all. I got to go in at the end of the week, so I'll do it late on a Friday afternoon. Yeah. I'll put enough in to keep my boss happy, but the system didn't help yeah. them do their job. And I'll call that legacy CRM. Um, where we are now is the next generation, and, and that's our vision. And, and we think of CRM as the tool that helps the salesperson do their job. So you're about to walk into a meeting as a salesperson. How can we help you prepare for that? Uh, we want to be the most useful application. Is that the focus now? Yes. So it's more engagement driven. It's much more engagement, and I'll call it moving from a system of record to a system of engagement. Right? It's much more engagement driven. Uh, it's much more about how you enable that individual. And if you think about selling, uh, whether it's business to business, mm -hmm. which which is um, the majority of our customers, business to business, we have a lot of retail too, mm -hmm. but business to business, the majority, even the business to business world, you're talking to a person. So it's person to person it's all engagement. It's SaaS though, right? SaaS product or uh, it SaaS, but we, no, we'll go on premise okay, as well. Will. Okay. So so something interesting here, we don't uh, uh, we determine our our business by customer relationship management. That's what we do. Those are the problems we solve. We help a company with relationship management. We help them deliver a better experience to their customers. We help their sales team understand the customer better. We're deployment agnostic. So you can go to our website today, turn it on, instantly start running out of the cloud. You can bring up uh, and we can manage for you a private instance out of the cloud. So if you don't want to be caught up in the multi-tenant, you want a little bit more mm -hmm. flexibility around timing of upgrades, you want a little more flexibility around implementation, we can go to multi-tenant, or we can put it into your own data center. So we're not defined by deployment. For us though, it's all subscription. So we look completely like a SaaS business when you look at the coverage. It's really the customer choice, what they want. It's right? customer so choice. And we have some customers for whom they have to do a lot of integration where they have big, big data sets and they do analytics on those and it's difficult to do that when it's remote in the cloud or they have regulatory or compliance concerns um, or they just want more control over timing and updates and flexibility. What do you guys, where do you guys, what do you guys do well when you're winning? I mean, everyone has that sweet spot. What's right. your winning formula? Where do you guys do best? Where do you win the most? What's the yeah, where, use case scenario? Great, 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 great question. So where do we win the most? Um, it's in cases where the customer is looking for, uh, I'll say a real platform to drive the front office. They're a bit of a maverick. They want to look forward in terms of the next generation of CRM, not the past, not the legacy. They see CRM as a differentiator in their business. They see the customer experience as a differentiator. They want to give their sales team real tools to use. They understand it's about person-to-person -person connections with the individual. So they want to enable that. Um, uh, there are some other you know, more technical areas. Uh, you know, we have a great platform for workflow and managing the customer lifecycle across the business. As the world moves to SaaS and subscription, we really see sales not just being about um, transactional business, but about being customer legacy and customer lifetime. So for example, we do service support case management in there because a lot of our customers so are you not, have all the, the features that people need, but you're really looking at the people saying, hey, I want a forward-looking, modern view. Forward-looking, modern system that's all about engagement with the customer and is not just a customer record. And automate some of the administrative, mundane, boss reporting stuff. We'll make it easy for that, right? Okay. So we still provide that, but right. it's a side effect of the fact that the sales team uses us. And going forward, things you're looking at, investing in chatbots and AI, I mean, you gotta, you gotta kind of lick your chops and say, hmm, there's some good stuff coming around there's the corner. There's some great stuff going there. So uh, we have a service in beta right now, which is, which is very exciting. I said sales is now about all person to person. Yeah. So this service takes, effectively starts with an email address and returns what is a person profile based on the email address. So you're about to talk to somebody. Okay, well, tell me a little bit about them. Now, a good salesperson, go out to the web, do some searches. Right now they're using LinkedIn, who they connected with. Go to That's LinkedIn. That's their best they could do. Right, are they on Twitter? Are they on Facebook? Uh, do they have Instagram? Learn about them, right? You can, yeah. you can learn hey, a lot of information. Say, hey, I saw your trip to Hawaii, how was it? That's good alignment. That's a good alignment, you know, or your favorite sports team. 
Yeah. You know, did you see that Warriors game, right? <laughs> you you know? Yankees and Red Sox fans getting together. You avoid the topic if that's the case. Yeah, did you did you <laughs> suffer that 49ers game last weekend, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. You, know, you learn that about a person. Um, we have a service that goes out. It's faster closure, and pulls too. You that move the needle on that. I mean, it's just basic common sense that you have that data. You avoid stepping on yourself if someone's, you know, who knows? They could be a Trump fan or Obama fan. If you're one side or the other, you don't. You want to know that. Going you want to know that, and, yeah, and not to talk about. <laughs> well, it used to be that that you know, in selling, you'd go visit someone in the office, and you could look around their office, and you'd see, you know, a diploma oh, yeah. on the wall, well, some pictures. Place literally, hey, nice thing, you know, kind of your Ex cubicle. Exactly right. Yeah. You know, today, the internet is that virtual office, right? What the person says on Facebook, what they say on Twitter, their profile on LinkedIn, any other social media, news articles, even pull all that together. So uh, uh, that we see is kind of the, the initial next stage. You guys have a customer it. event that you guys put on, anything going on in the market in terms of events that you guys participating in? Where where can people find more about sugar in the market? Well, yeah, of course, always our website, sugarcrm.com. We put on a great customer event every year, uh, SugarCon. Yeah. That'll be coming up at the end of next year, actually. Great event for us. Uh, uh, lots of companies come together. Uh, there's a lot of information. Practitioner, to get off. not an industry, but more of a branded show for you guys. Yes, yes, branded show for us, uh, practitioners, uh, people that come together around the industry. Yeah. Um, great customer reference stories yeah. you can put together there. Uh, um, you know, great things. I mean, we have, you know, we're, we're the system for yeah. IBM, largest in the world. Uh, in media, New York Times uses us. So if you're a New York Times customer and you call yeah. in to... Subscriptions are up. They're aligning with their audiences. You know, they, Even with the uh, post-election, I saw that John Markov, who's, who's retiring, a uh, good yeah. friend, but he was mentioning that their digital subscriptions are up through the roof since the election. So good software. Everyone wants that. that information, right? <laughs> right. So yeah, lots yeah. of places for us. Larry, thanks so much for spending the time here on theCUBE. And uh, we're going to have another segment talking about the, kind of the bigger picture. But congratulations and thanks for coming and sharing your oh, Great. Content. Thank you very much. This is theCUBE in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.